this is actually a great segue into calculating your return. And now it's using the XIRR formula in Excel. It's really, really simple. You have the dates in one row or column. You have the amounts, both positive and negative in the next column. And I have the net amount here as well. So I'm calculating the XIRR by taking the dates. So this is just a range of all the dates, comma, a range of all the values. So it's showing that this loan was purchased in 2020 for 156,000. Payments were received and the monthly servicing fee was 15 bucks. So I'm just netting that out. Across the years, the payment amount increased because it was a step rate increase loan mod. And then it finally culminated with a payoff at the end of the term and the XIRR, which by the way, is, is taking the monthly servicing fee for that month and a $300 payoff fee that our loan servicer charged. And then putting that all into the range goes all the way to the end here. So what you can do when you are looking at these loan mods is add a couple of different scenarios. So let's say we have option one, option two, and option three. And option one in this case is starting the, the loan mod. This could be looking at a down payment in the first month. We're going to call this one option one here. We're going to use this range of values. And then in the beginning, we're going to say it's a $10,000 down payment payment. And then this one will be a zero down payment. They're not making any down payment in the first month. And then we look at the difference between in the $10,000 down, let's say they're only making a 1200 per month payment. And then in other one, since they aren't making a down payment, we'll have the monthly payment a little bit greater at 1800. But the idea here is that you can then compare the internal rate of return with the down payment and a lower monthly payment versus no down payment and a higher monthly payment. You could add a third option, a fourth option, and essentially just workshop internally what all of these different scenarios would look like to you. And it's important to do it this way with XIRR, this formula, because it incorporates the time value of money as opposed to just looking at a cash on cash return. It's really useful to have that full picture. And in this case, it ends in a payoff, which you could make an assumption that a loan mod will pay for five years and then pay off. And you can use the amortization schedule to see what the payoff amount would be at the end of the term. This is an interest only mod. So that that was part of our balloon disclosure. The amount at the end of the term was fixed. However, you can't always determine whether or not a loan would pay off or not. So you could run it out with the full term of that loan mod all the way 20 years into the future, or however long your term is set for, and see the difference in the IRR based on those different scenarios. And then if 1% in this case, not a huge difference, option two without the down payment is a better return. So in this case, you'd be happy to start collecting $600 more per month. But if it's a little bit closer, or for example, the down payment is significantly more value to you, then that's really where you can work with the borrower on a hardship withdrawal or find finding another way to obtain those funds so that they can move forward with the down payment. So this is really rough math, the numbers that I put together, but what's not rough, what's more accurate is that XIRR formula, as long as you have these values and these dates accurately recorded. It's great to use this when you get the borrower's numbers back, just showed you that web form, they give you the down payment, the monthly payment that they can afford, plug those in based on the cost basis of your acquisition. How does that look? What kind of return are you seeing? And if it meets your expectations, then moving forward with the borrower proposal is often a great strategy because one, it'll be much quicker. And two, it's really represented by the borrower that it's something affordable to them. Because sometimes, and I've seen this before, where you can't afford to give them the option that they say is affordable. So they end up stretching their budget to say, well, maybe I can pay a little bit more to, to make this mod work. And three months later, they redefault because it really wasn't sustainable in the first place. And that's where looking at their finances, kind of coaching them through how they can get back on track with regard to other expenses that they have and other ways that they can trim the fat a little bit and their budget can be super useful for the longevity and the probability that that loan mod continues on. Highly recommend you use XIRR, use it on the borrower's proposed mod, and then work into an IRR that fits your goals and then massage down payment versus the monthly payment amount to reach a happy medium that's affordable as well as profitable. Nobody is talking about the revolution happening in real estate where regular investors can earn great profits while helping homeowners that the banks have failed. Join the movement and start your journey into note investing at fixnotes.com.